Good, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, workflow where uh, I'm going to be presenting some uh, tools for scientific communication and, and self publishing using an open source toolkit that we develop alongside some uh, online writing and uh, writing tools and uh, publishing infrastructure. So, my name is Steve Purvis. Uh, I back, I'm a software engineer originally. I got my degree at Newcastle University, and I've worked most of my career developing scientific software for subsurface science, so geoscientists, geophysicists. The uh, majority of that has been in industry, both commercial software development, but also research software development in, uh, in uh, R&D departments of uh, in, in oil and gas companies. Uh, I've also worked as a contracting software engineer, and, I and I'm co-founder of a company called CurveNote, where we're building uh, open source tools for uh, open research publishing. We're also uh, contributing members of the uh, Executable Books project, where we uh, work on some of the open source libraries and tools around JupyterBook. And we also, uh, if specifically in there, we work on a Markdown with MIST spec, helping develop the spec and also developing the Markdown MIST uh, JavaScript parser. So, well, our goals, what we're trying to do uh, with a curve note is to get science out of PDF documents. So what we want to do is provide a really easy means for researchers to get from research materials to publications on the web quickly and easily. And to make that whole process faster, more interactive, and to support reproducibility, but also to enable some collaborative workflows around what is often complicated uh, mangling together of different technologies in order to produce a scientific website. And on the way, make it easy to create rich and beautiful scientific websites. So the walk workflow, sorry, the walk through today is gonna be quite narrow focused and look at actually just a couple of different ways from both the researcher's perspective, working at a high level, and somebody working at low level and mark down and on the command line how you get a, a, a project containing documents and Jupyter Notebooks out and on, on, onto the web. Uh, so before I sort of start the walkthrough, I just wanna have a, explain what is CurveNote, and that's, CurveNote is a set of open source, permissively licensed, MIT licensed, CLI and libraries for publishing and document generation. It's an online scientific editor for collaborative writing, essentially a web app like Google Docs, but for science uh, writing, and some collaboration infrastructure that connects the two. Uh, and before I start the workflow, I just want to show you four things that sort of curve note can do in a, in a broader context that is going to help us, we think, get science uh, out of PDF and get more science on the web more easily. So the first is change, copy, and paste. Copy and paste is rife in uh, scientific workflows, especially around the manuscript preparation time, preparing drafts of reports, and all too often that we see screenshots being taken directly off the screen out of Jupyter Notebooks and then used in papers and reports, and that process being repeated time and time again. Even the subset of researchers who managed to save out a PDF still don't perform any tracking or version control around that. And that means there's no auditability of things that go into many papers. Updating is very difficult, and uh, definitely there's, there's no interactivity uh, around that process. So what I want to quickly show is one of the things we've done to try and uh, address that. And I'll just go here to, this is curve sort of visual web editor which is a lot like Google Docs that allows you to write manuscripts. And uh, it's, it's organized in terms of blocks or different blocks of data. And what I'm able to do is say, if I want to use a, an artifact or something that's been generated in Jupyter, we also have a, developed a, an extension. This is currently a Chrome extension, which is now turning into a Jupyter extension now that Jupyter Lab 3 uh, extension APIs a bit more stable. But what that allows us to do is allows us essentially save a snapshot of a process notebook. It adds versioning information to all the cells. And then it allows us to grab any cell in that notebook, copy a link to it, 
with a sort of hash that's stored in, in our database. And then we're able to go and copy and paste that link into any of these documents here. And we're not pasting a, a snapshot, it is actually the Jupyter output that is then getting passed around. This is an Altair plot, so it's interactive and remains interactive. But you can imagine this works just the same with matplotlib plots, et cetera. And it comes along with its sort of full version history, all the changes I've made to it in various uh, walkthroughs. And because it's in a version control database, that artifact is sort of held immutable and is sort of API addressable also. So this sort of brings version control into this layer of science, data science, where we have lots of exploratory work or visualizations being created in Jupyter notebooks and used in different documents and reports. And now we're able to sort of provide some version control and tracking around that. So that's, that's one aspect of, of what, what Curve Note provides. The other things we're working on is scientific output on, on the web should be, it should be able to have rich scientific papers in a web-based format. So rich interlinking is something that we're working on a lot. This is a website created from uh, the Curve Note tools. And this is actually a complete PhD thesis, complete with licensing information, DOI, things like that. Uh, but we're also able to uh, use LaTeX type features for cross-referencing, citations, support, and without having to do any custom web development, we're able to add features that you'd expect from uh, like hovers on citations, hovers, etc., so on figures, the ability to easily browse around the document and, and read, and the same goes for tables, equations, and all the sort of cross-references in that document. That stems out to also sort of external links, like special links off to Wikipedia. So all these features that you might find in like eLife or a, a journal system where you, uh, that has a web development team that is able to put their journals out in this really rich format. The idea is we can bring that down to allow a, a group of researchers to self-publish uh, web-based content of that quality. That's, that's our sort of aim. Okay. We are also uh, very aware and, and working towards having machine readable. So the website is immediately more readable to a human than a PDF, but also these are machine readable. So for any link on any, any website we create, we just type .json and we automatically have all the uh, metadata including things like uh, author IDs or author information, licensing, open access, contributor roles, immediately available with that individual page, as well as the entire document as a markdown abstract syntax tree. So the actual entire content is there, parsable, and this is an ideal format to be able to get a hold of if you want to be able to put an indexing engine or search engine on any body of, uh, of content. Uh, you can use this data structure to, to power that. And reproducibility. So one of the other things we're working on with the, within the scope of the executable books is a project called Thebe that allows us, and this is a prototype, so we don't quite have this in our websites that we can generate from the CLI yet, but we're actively working on it. This allows us to get a web page and connect it to a Python kernel. And this web page again includes outputs from Jupyter Notebooks, which are then computed on demand and can be used and then can be updated. So that means a, a, a set of research codes, notebooks provided and updated by researchers, can easily can be then translated to a, a, a paper on the web that. Uh, retains that ability to recompute the, the results and the data sets. So provided you have taken care of provisioning the data, providing a compute service, this allows you then to do the final layer uh, and provide that uh, interactive paper. So these are the things that we're actively working on. And the fourth thing to highlight, which we'll see a bit more, is we really also focus on reuse. Currently, researchers, a lot of the time, 
spend a lot of time uh, recasting uh, text-based content and papers into different journal formats and often asking one of them to then take their content to the web also is a huge extra demand so it doesn't happen. So the idea is to provide a common set of tools where you can move, produce websites, but then you use that exact same content to take it to a journal template in PDF or take it out to Word. And both the web-based tool and the command line tools are able to do both of these things. Great, so that was sort of a broad picture of why researchers can get value from uh, using CurveNote and why once researchers have put material out on CurveNote, uh, we're able to uh, access that content integrated in, into other sort of services and improve the discoverability of, of, of work that a project or sets of projects at a university are, are doing. So I'm going to show you in a bit more detail what some of these, uh, how, how, how these tools work. And I'm going to start from the, uh, from the maybe the wrong, or, or the other way around anyway, uh, by taking a quick look at the, uh, the editor again and the, and the visual tools. And then in a sort of second part, go on to look at how we work at a lower level with Markdown and Jupyter Notebooks locally in a, in a workflow that might be powered by uh, Git for, for version control, for example. And the reason sort of we do that is we are sort of actively working and supporting a bunch of people who want to work in Markdown, and we understand that, or we see that people working in Markdown and working with Git for uh, scientific writing and preparing of materials educational materials also is, is growing, but that's still only a very small percentage of the total uh, set of researchers, especially when it comes to publication, where uh, there's a really diverse group of different researchers at different levels who are working in a variety of tools, and that while moving to a Google Docs style online uh, editor and a WYSIWYG experience is maybe something they can adopt, whereas moving directly to a markdown experience is just too much of an ask. So hence we'll, we'll, look, at the, uh, we'll look at the visual editor first and then go to the, the low level tools to see how maybe somebody at a low level can consume some of the, the things. Okay. So I'll go back to the curve note editor. And the CurveNote editor, basically when you come into, when you come into CurveNote, you sort of have this project-based space. Things are uh, organized in, in projects. And if I go into this project here, which is a project analyzing some seismic data from a, like a volcano eruption last year, what we've got is we've got an article or a manuscript, sort of front and center. And then we have a collection of uh, Jupyter Notebooks they're all rendered here uh, in sort of static form. You can't compute or anything on the platform. You just deal with the, the actual artifacts, the, the actual uh, computed notebooks. And you're able to organize this collection of, uh, say, notebooks and supporting work around a, a manuscript or a report in, in a single place. You're able to also then uh, invite various collaborators on the platform who can come in and uh, work with you. This editor itself is sort of fully collaborative. It's not uh, easy to show that with just me here, but you get a Google Docs type experience where multiple people can be uh, editing the cells at the same time, except we, this is now set up for scientific uh, writing. So we can do things like add a reference, and we come in and into a sort of reference management view. We can easily add citations. We can import new ones from DOI and upload DibTech, et cetera. So the idea is to provide a, a really easy writing experience for uh, researchers in this environment. Also an experience that's very like uh, LaTeX in terms of you can add references to tables quite easily, figures, 
equations, etc. Uh, and just make it as easy as possible to uh, write a, a draft of a, of a paper. If I come down here in this cell, I've left myself a little to do, and uh, all the maths here is actually LaTeX. So we can come in and use sort of LaTeX accelerated LaTeX to, to write any maths. We can add numbering and cross-referencing just like we would in LaTeX, but instead of this ending up as a, as a PDF, it's this sort of cross-referencing and linking while someone is writing that allows you to create these web experiences that have all this rich interlinking in it. And I can link my equation in like so. And I can also sort of do things like outside of this article, cross-reference the different things. Uh, like here, I'll say data uh, recorded using the network of seismic monitoring stations on the island. Great. So, and then that's linked off to this other document that I have there. So, the aim is to provide that, uh, like, first class Google Docs style authoring experience, but for science, uh, scientific and technical writing. And now, also, we've got sort of threaded comments here, uh, where there can be conversations and reviews going on around this different blocks of content, but this also stems out to Jupyter. So if we go back over to sort of Jupyter Lab, if we come down here to this article that we're producing, we should see now that those comments are there already. So there's some flow back and forward between the Jupyter environment and this environment enabling more collaboration. So I can go and put this uh, annotation on this plot, for example. Save a new version of this, and then that new version is uh, immediately available back up in the in the document. So I can just come here. I see I've got a different icon to tell me the, the use the latest version of the plot, and we can do that. So this cuts out a lot of this copy and paste back and forward workflow around. Uh, especially one researcher working and driving the analysis in Jupyter Lab and their collaborators who are also working and helping, working on the, the draft itself of the report or, or manuscript. Okay, so now we can just go and publish that to the web. And this is something we added very recently. Let me just uh, sort of delete that, show you the. So we can come in here and add any number of sort of domains. It is possible to add custom domains as well. But right now, this gets hosted on a, on a CDN service that is, is here and also a, a, a free part of the, the platform. And we can come in here and choose a, a subdomain. This is my username. So we can choose a subdomain related to my username for the, the project press publish to domains, and that will go off now and deploy the, the website in a, in a single click. So this is the idea that enabling researchers to uh, easily get iterations of their work straight out there on, on the web. In this case, under their own domain, which is uh, isolate, which is an independent sort of standalone thing at the moment. They're also able to come in here, export as docx, which will sort of fire off that type of export, and also export as PDF. And we've got a growing number of uh, templates available for different journals. They can come in and select a particular journal format. And then the, this content, in this case, the, the paper, will go to that template. Because journals have all sorts of different requirements, we also put in uh, there is a workflow to add checks for uh, various fields that a particular template wants or, or requires. And then that goes off and uh, runs the export. 
my containers need to warm up, and one's already warmed up, and then uh, we're able to just download the, the, the Word document there, which I'll try and do this, see if Word for Mac incorporates. Yeah, yes, it sort of did. And there's the same sort of content out in a, in a basic Word format. Great, I'll let the PDF be able to run. So that's great, and that's, so that's for, uh, from a, a researcher's point of view, and this is sort of, sort of the researcher who wants to stay in this sort of web interface and use the collaborative tools in that way. What I'm gonna go on and share now is look at uh, the sort of the other, the other side of the stack, which is this lower level side of the stack based around uh, a CLI. And there's a lot of similarity, I think, to what we're doing here and uh, other tools like, uh, like, like Sphinx, except the big difference is this isn't sort of Sphinx. This is a fresh implementation of document generation based on JavaScript and actually TypeScript. So we provide this TypeScript CLI. So in order to get that, you just have to have a Node.js installed on the system, then you can install Curve Note globally, and that gives you this CLI tool uh, that you can do various things. You can do the export directly to PDF if you've got LaTeX setting up your system, also the, the word export, but we're gonna concentrate on this, on this web export. So if I just pop in here to this uh, empty folder that I've created and do curve note, well, if I can type, curve note init, can you see that? Okay, yeah, it's big enough. Yeah. Uh, you've got a couple of different options. So I'm just going to quickly import from Curve Note. So what this allows you to do as a, as a researcher or maybe as an RSE or somebody looking after uh, how these websites get distributed, you're able to come here, uh, give it just a link to, to the project, a folder to clone to and say yes. And then that will go off and start cloning all the content locally. So we'll start to see all the IPython notebooks and uh, markdown files appearing here. Uh, all the content is a markdown, markdown with mist, with some additional markup and comments from uh, the, the Curve Note platform. And something went wrong, something didn't like. Oh, did it... Uh, and something went wrong. LibreSSL. Okay. Uh, let me try that to say that. I'm going to say, I think it pulled all my content all right, but I had trouble starting the, the web environment. So let me just try to force that to do that again. So what that does is it pulls all the content and it sets you up with, and then clones down uh, uh, a website, a sort of static site shell, and also installs a local, runs a local development server. So now you immediately have this local uh, development experience with, uh, in Markdown. So I can come in here, and now I have that website running on localhost uh, with a file watch active. So I can come in and I can start completely independently from all the, the web editor. I can start coming in here and writing, adding things like this misdirective. Uh, uh, write in markdown plus mist. And then that will, that will rebuild. I should have refreshed. No. Okay. Why isn't that? Huh. Save. Okay, my demo has gone wrong. I will try that again in a minute. 
But the idea is you get a, a complete sort of development environment here where you can go ahead and build that website. I'll just do curve at the start again. Ah, because I'm in the wrong markdown file. Right, sorry, so let me go to the right markdown file, <laughs> which is the main page of the website there. And now I'm going to write my misdirective. Right. All right, and now it works. Good. Uh, so then what you've got is this uh, really easy environment to go and use all the sort of markdown, all the sort of mist to, oh, I'll try, to tip. Yeah, and all the sort of rich things that the mist adds into uh, markdown in order to go ahead and, and draft your paper. All the curve note uh, tools are completely based on mist and actually it's the mist abstract it's AST that's uh, under the hood. We can go and have a look at the, the docs here. If you're interested in mist. You can go and check out the mist website here uh, and see how to use sort of mist to write to see how to create uh, misdirectives in your markdown to do various things and also how this renders out to sort of LaTeX and HTML, etc. Okay, so there we pulled a, uh, we pulled a website in from a curve note, but in addition, this can be used completely independently from curve note. And I can equally come here into a folder of plain uh, markdown files and Jupyter Notebooks, just type curve note in it. And without using any of the collaboration or the web platform, just use the content in this folder to then go and again, create that website. Again, cloning curve note and stored in the web libraries. And just while it's doing that, when you do create this local build process, you get this build folder, which essentially is your static site. So you could go off and deploy that wherever you like, but we can also go and immediately deploy that on the infrastructure that we've set up for curve note. So our CDN hosting will also allow you to host these uh, websites. And you can see that this one has been built completely from the markdown files on this machine. And if I want to go out and get that on the web, we say curve note deploy. And th that then goes off and deploys to this uh, domain here that is set in the YAML file. So when you init a file, all you get again, alongside your content is you get a lead YAML file uh, that allows you to set different things about the, uh, about the project and about your site configuration. So you can tweak here the uh, titles, you can tweak the uh, navigation, but you can also come in and you can add things like open access metadata. You can add licenses and add any, uh, for example, SPDX, uh, license abbreviation here in order to identify and put licenses on your on your site and everything you saw sort of us adding to the the, the site and main curve note tool produced earlier you can actually build up and add here by adding the, the metadata if we just go and open that uh, website now we can just see that now that's uh, immediately deployed so the, the idea is to make it very easy to have that continually publishing cycle around, uh, around a piece of research work 
that either somebody working at this level or somebody working in visual tools can easily, easily uh, perform. And just the last one thing uh, I wanna show is how would this work in a sort of larger, larger context? How would somebody, for example, support a group of researchers publishing uh, their material within some larger website uh, or within some larger web presence? And the, the fact that uh, these things, these uh, projects are all sort of organized independently with their own groups of collaborators, it uh, still means that somebody here working at the, C at the CLI level can actually compose a website from multiple different projects. And I'll just show that quickly. So if I come in here and uh, say curve note clone, so I'm in this new folder of this website that I created completely locally from these markdown files. I'm going to say curve note clone and that what that command asks me for it asks me for again a remote project and a local folder so I'm going to go back here say curve note clone and I'm just going to say put that in content La Palma and now what that's going to do is that's going to uh, go out and grab that project and again clone all the content the markdown files and the, the notebooks, et cetera, as well as all that uh, site's author, metadata, and licensing information. It's going to clone that into that subfolder. And it's also going to update my root YAML file here to include the new, the new project. And now if I just do curve note start, I'll be able to start that local web server. And here, as well as now this, uh, this simple blog that I'd had up as the primary project, have we been able to pull in a project from another, another research group? And then there are various ways where we can go in and uh, tweak and improve the, uh, I don't, the, the navigation layout there. So for example, one of those is I can nest a project here, and I've probably done something wrong. Let's see if that worked. And now here I've got this sort of nested nested view there. So there you're able to just show how a single sort of, uh, a single researcher or somebody would be able to run and just uh, run deployments uh, of, a, of a website can, pull in individual websites from multiple, multiple different researchers and easily deploy those as a, as, a larger, as a larger thing. An example of that, one of those that we built was a, a recent conference by uh, uh, the Software Underground, which is, uh, is again, a subsurface community. And their conference website was built out with CurveNote. Again, all rich sort of uh, material in Jupyter Notebooks, tutorials, from various different groups of authors, all brought together via curve note, curve note projects, uh, and, and presented as a single sort of conference website. Great. So that was everything in the, in the walkthrough. I touched and went quite quickly through sort of this sort of single path of being able to deploy these websites either from directly from a, a user interface or from uh, some command line tools using uh, Markdown and Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, and there's a lot more to, to look at and explore within there. What we're aiming, and yeah, there's a number of different ways there to get started. If you just want to try.curvenote.com, you can try it on, on any GitHub repo yourself. And our CLI is completely open and the tool is, the online is also free to use. Um, really, we're still developing this. There's a lot of work in progress and happy to give further tutorials or hands-on sessions to learn more about the system. And we're currently sort of looking for, for more groups who want to try out this type of publishing to work with uh, while we continue to develop the, the tool set. 
Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I guess we've got some questions on Slido now. Is a subscription needed? Uh, no, not for individuals. Uh, it, it, the, these, the, uh, the libraries and the open source tools, the CLI is completely open source and free. The actual uh, web editor, no subscription is needed. There is a, a, a pro subscription just around the uh, journal templates. So if you want to create a PDF, you need a subscription. But otherwise, to create websites and do anything else, you don't. Uh, to get LaTeX out of the system, you don't. Or to get a default PDF out, you don't. Can an institution buy campus slices? Yes. And that's what we're looking, uh, we're looking towards to better understand how institutions might want to deploy this. And then they can certainly buy a, a campus license for access or uh, independent setups of the infrastructure. Uh, for screen readers and all text figures, I, I think it's reasonable, but I have not done, we have not yet done a lot of work on accessibility. We're still building uh, this, the, the, the reader up and tearing it to pieces and rebuilding it. Uh, so we're still going through that process and we, we need to do more work on accessibility for, for sure. Uh, yes, you can export to LaTeX directly. Uh, that was the third button, I don't know, on the export thing. Uh, and you can also export that in template or you can just get the plain LaTeX dump out. That's from the web platform. What we're working on right now, and hopefully in a couple of weeks it'll be done, is that without involving the platform at all, uh, quite similar to the Pandoc, the Curve Note tool will allow you to go from MIST directly to LaTeX uh, in the command line uh, as well, completely independently as well as Word. Uh, formerly Cyflow, I've not used Cyflow. It's not usable for complex tables. Uh, for complex tables, it, it's not bad. We, at the moment we've got, we use Prose Mirror, which is a, a collaborative editor, and their table support allows us to do uh, core spans, row spans, merge cells, and et cetera. It's reasonable. For very large tables, we can bring in uh, Pandas tables and uh, render those through to both uh, LaTeX Word documents as well as getting out in, in the web. Uh, references, the reference support is pretty good. You can bring in DOIs and you can keep re-importing a BibTeX file and we'll dedupe them. So as long as the tags stay stable, that works pretty well. We've just done an integration in the CLI to Paperpile because Paperpile has this lovely virtual Bib file which you can declare on their system and then we can access that. And we're uh, we're looking for uh, Zotero is probably the next target for integration. With LaTeX support, do Curve Note and Overleaf overlap? Yes, they do. Except the point I think of Curve Note is the uh, increased the, the collaboration and the fact that you're not having to write in Markdown. That you're writing in sorry, in LaTeX, you're writing in a, a WYSIWYG interface, or you're working in Markdown plus MIS. Uh, no, all publications, no. Uh, if you deploy on our C CDN, yes, they, they, they will be. Uh, if you obviously deploy in it, what the CLI builds independently, no. Uh, will that change? Probably yes. It's one of the things that we're talking to when talking to more and more universities, we tend to talk to a lot more to libraries and archiving is, uh, is something we're, we're figuring out. So serving anything that we publish out there definitely needs to be probably archived long term. And we've, we haven't figured that out yet, but we want to. But today, the, the, the depending on us being alive and having that uh, CDN up. So does it work with our data markdown in a similar way? Uh, you can use a Jupyter Notebook with uh, an R kernel, but uh, we're not yet able to do some of the things that R Markdown does. R Markdown allows you to have interactive 
in-text controls, driving variables, et cetera. And that's something that uh, we're actively working with the, the executable books and, and Jupyter community on, because that is a, that's a sort of larger topic in the, in the Jupyter ecosystem as well, is providing that link between uh, MIST and interactive controls and MIST and uh, computation. Uh, our comments were also working across GUI, markdown, file editing flavors. No, not the moment. We're considering a VS Code plugin or sorry, extension that could enable that uh, commenting, uh, but that isn't, that isn't working at, at that level yet. So unless anybody's got any more last minute questions, I think we'll thank Steve again for showing such an interesting tool. Yeah, thank you very much.